Hello everyone, it's been two years since the beginning of the pandemic and when I shot my last video uh, it was about uh, how to shoot bees on white background with a new technique just using a piece of paper, uh, shooting the bees on it, providing a bit of a shadow and then how to process these images in Lightroom so you can easily find these videos on my channel. Here is for the follow-up. Recently I received an, an email from somebody saying like you said you'd be providing a video about how to process the images in GIMP. It's been two years like oh my god yes indeed. So here I am uh, doing this uh, as a special request for a friend from South Africa. Um, how to produce these images. How to combine the photos that you shot and process in Lightroom in an uh, image editing software called GIMP, which is free, open source, and how to combine images of different sizes uh, with uh, text, uh, arrows, lines, all these things, even a watermark if you need to. Uh, but basically how to turn a photo into infographics for education. And this is very important. Photos can be beautiful, but they have such a huge potential uh, to educate people uh, about nature. So what you need is just a very simple piece of software to turn your photos into these tutorials. So we will start from Lightroom, uh, where we ended the last time. I selected a few photos here, which I will simply export as JPEGs. So I'm clicking on the export button. I want to export them into a GIMP tutorial folder on my desktop. Don't care about the file naming, videos, image. Yes, I'll go for JPEG, high quality, that's great. Image sizing, I don't need to export them full size because I will combine them all into smaller versions uh, so that all the photos fit into a, a smaller image. If you want to print a A1 or A0 poster, of course you'll want to keep the original size uh, but here 2004-2004 uh, is way enough so this is what I will do I don't need a watermark and then I will show the pictures in Finder so I will just export a few photos and see how it looks so while it's exporting so this is GIMP I'm using GIMP 2.10 which is the kind of current version. I didn't update it in a few months, but it's still 2.10 something. Uh, it's very easy to find on the internet. Just look up for GIMP, download it. It works on every platform. It's free. It's fairly stable. It's a bit like Photoshop, but like a free version of it. Um, so it's, it's a pretty good piece of software. It's not the easiest to use at first glance, but you do have a series of tools here in the corner that you will learn to use. Each of them is declined in various uh, forms uh, for selecting, for cropping, for doing a lot of different things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just look at all these photos I exported, which are here, and I will just drop them, select them all, and drop them in GIMP. Each of them will open as a separate image here. You can see all of them are opened in different little windows. Uh, sorry, tabs. And so what we are going to do now is combine all these images into, let's say, um, as one single image saying bees of my garden or something. So we can create a new file, which would be, let's say, okay, uh, 4000 by 4000 um, with a white background, if I can select it. Uh, background color fill with white. So this will create a 4000 by 4000 pixel image with a white background, which is a square. Yeah, I know it's big. There we go. So this will be our final layout and we are going to copy each of these B into this layout. So to do so, I don't want to copy it with the white background. I want to select the B and filter it out. So for this, I'm using this fuzzy select and I'm going to click on the white. It will select all the white except the B, normally. And that's where we stop. Uh, so 
sorry, I had to make a little break because my game version was not up to date and uh, some things were not working well. Anyway, so the idea is that we are going to take these five images and combine them into this central part, into a visual for education. So the first thing is that we want to take each individual B, not with a whole white background, because they will end up overlapping each other, and you end up with things like, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like, paste as a new layer, you don't want yeah, things to be problematic and going on the top of each other. Um, scale, there we go. Uh, because then you will end up with these big squares sticking out and going over the other bees. So that's not something you want. I'm going to step back a couple of times. What you want is to kind of cut all around the bee so that the white background is minimal around it and it's easier to combine them especially because my new photos have a bit of a shadow under so for this you need to use this tool fuzzy select tool you can just press the letter u on your keyboard and that works as well so u selected you do have a series of options here we have a limit of 10 that's how selective the tool is if I put a limit of 40, it will really get close to the B. Uh, even the things that are not fully white will be selected, uh, like the light gray one will be selected, so it will remove part of the shadow. If I put a limit of 5, it's going to be much more strict in the selection, and you see it takes the whole shadow. So what you want is something in between, you don't want to really cut the shadows, you don't want to get too close to the bee because it might uh, remove some of the hair, it might remove some of the part of the wings which are almost transparent. So I usually go for a selection of 10 and that's usually pretty good. It's, it gives me a good balance. So here what we selected is not the bee itself, it's actually the white background around it. And we need to invert, so I could one of the things I could do is just to delete that white background um, and or turn it to transparent, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to invert the selection. And to do so, you can click on, depending on your computer here on the Mac, I'm clicking on Command I. And what he will do, you won't see much of a difference. But what he did is that here you can see the selection is between the B and the border. And when I do Command I, inverting, you see there's no more border shiny here, uh, it selects only the B. So that means I selected the B. From there on I can just do a simple copy paste into the final layout. So I'm going to copy that B, Control C or Command C, and I'm going to paste it. I'm not just going to do Command V because it will do some funny things with the layers. I'm going to go for Edit, Paste as a new layer. Why? Because it will create here an image of the bee. So there are different layers, different slices in this image. The bottom slice is the white background. And then you see I do have here a first bee, which is a pasted layer. And I can just move it around as I want. And I can resize it and I can just rotate it like you would do in PowerPoint. It's very easy to manipulate and we're going to copy and paste all the bees into this layout. So I'm going to do it very fast from now. Always the same thing. Going to the bee, selecting the fuzzy tool with U, clicking on the bee, inverting the selection, copying and going to the other one and pasting as a new layer and the new layer will appear here. So they put them at the same place, it's no problem. You can easily move one or the other. If you want to select a B, you just click on the layer it, it belongs to and then you move the B. If you select the wrong layer, you can't move the B. Oh yeah, you can also, you can also move the B. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's a new version. But yes, um, just selecting the layer, you can see this one is the B on the top left, this one is the B on the top right. You can rename them as you want, like uh, B1. B2, etc. So I'm going to do that for the odd bees. 
U for selecting the tool, clicking on the white, inverting the selection, copying the B up and pasting it as a new layer. And there it is again. And I can just move it down here, see? So for now it's very easy. I'm going to select a few more. Up, oh, U, inverting, copying, IP and pasting as a new layer. This one as well, up, selecting, inverting, copying, and pasting as a new layer. There we go. So all the bees are now on the same image. And you can see the amount of white around each bee is minimal. The bit of the shadow here is going over the other bee. But I can easily combine them so that these white areas don't overlap. Um, so I'm going to try to find thematic for these. Uh, these are obviously the same genus Nomada. Um, this one is a bit different. So what I can do is that I want to all of them to look on the on the right side. So see these ones look on the right, this one look on the right. These two need to be switched, flipped uh, from left to right. So there are tools for that. Many of these tools are here. You can hear, uh, have here uh, the scale tool that allow you to resize them. And I'm going to use that first actually. I'm going to use the scale tool because uh, this bee is actually much smaller than the others. So I'm going to select this bee in the layer here. I'm going to click on it and then I can just resize it. Either I can put a value or I can just manually resize it so that it fits uh, its real size. I can do this for this. I'm going to do it for this one as well. It's a bit smaller. There we go. Uh, and these ones, yeah, this one is also a bit smaller than the others. All right. And uh, this one should be a tad smaller as well. Up. There we go. So I've resized them. I can then uh, use the same button to rotate them eventually. Uh, I wanted to flip them. So here's a flip button and you can flip them horizontally or vertically. So I want to flip this one horizontally and I want to flip this one horizontally. Now they're all looking in the same direction. I will, if I wanted I could slid them vertically um, but that's not needed in this case. Um, I could also rotate them. You know, if, if I want to create a scene where the bee is just walking at the wall. Um, but yes, not needed in this very case so it's okay. And there are a lot of other tools when you can slightly modify the shape of the bee. But we're not going to go there today. So, now we do have all the bees looking in the same direction. And we can start, for example, adding some text. Um, so you click on the text tool, future medium 70 is usually what I'm using, not orange. I'd rather get a nice gray or black, let's put it black. So you can choose all these different colors. There we go, black text, 70. And gonna, so that's a mega shield. SP, male. Just to show you an example, um, if I want to text like, I realize the text is too small, I can just select the whole thing and just increase to 90. There we go. Uh, these text tools are a bit annoying. Sometimes they don't exactly do what you want to do. Um, here I want to move the text closer to the B, but it's fairly difficult to select the text. So what I can do is just to zoom in a bit more. And it's much easier to grab one of the letters and move it up. You can see the quality of the B photo is still pretty good, even though it's a composite with like reduced sized images. So Megashile. And um, I'm going to say, I'm just going to put here Nomada. And these are, uh, okay, I'm just also male. But yeah, I'm not going to go into too much details. Once again, I type the text too small. I can go for 90. 
just to show you the process. Um, you can easily add lines uh, to these uh, charts as well. So there are tools allowing you to draw like a pencil. Um, you can define the size of the pencil like it's 10 and then you would just click from one to the other. You can use the shift, uh, sorry, the, which key is that? Up. Yeah. You can choose the command key and shift key to uh, define the different lines. So why is it not drawing the line? Because when I started drawing the line, I was selecting the text tool here. You see, everything I've added on this image for now has been images and then text tools. Um, the, the text boxes are here. I can The way they are displayed in this little window is the way they are displayed in uh, the image. So imagine I select this B and I put it on top of the other. Oh, it doesn't work. Why? Because this B in the, in the layers is placed under this B. So if I change the order of the layers and I move this one above, it will display above the other. You see, that's just as simple as that. So if you want your text to be displayed on top of all the Bs, you have to move your text on top of this list. You can see now the text is written above the B. So these are little things that you can learn fairly easily. There's, there are some very good tutorials for this software and uh, it's fairly easy. So why uh, I wanted to add a line, so I'm using this pencil tool, but to have the line being displayed, the best way is to just use it on the background so or to create a new uh, layer that I will put on the top. I'm going to create a new layer that I'm going to call lines and it's going to be a transparent layer. So initially it looks like it's totally empty but I can draw things on it. Like I'm going to draw this line from here to there and you can see the line is being drawn. And this line is only recorded into this line layer. If I hide the line layer it, you see the line disappear. So I can easily add another line that goes to the other B up and there we go. So you see that's how you add text, that's how you add the uh, lines that allow you to create uh, visuals like the one I showed you earlier and I can't find anymore on my computer. Um, but yes, so this is as simple as that, selecting the bees using the magic wand fuzzy select tool by typing the uh, uh, U on your keyboard and then inverting the selection with command I, copying, pasting into a single image and then adding text and images. Once you've done that, you can save this document. It will not save it as a JPEG, it will use it uh, XCF extension, which is the one for a uh, GIMP. And uh, so it's not yet exploitable as it is, but it saves all the different layers and all the different parts, so you can still move them around as you want. Um, but it's not yet something you can directly post on social media. What you need to do is then to take this image and export it. Export. And then you can export it as a PNG or as a JPEG. Um, it's fair as if I want to import it as a PNG, I just go for now. It's going to ask me a few details like the quality of the picture and all of that. I'm just going for all default. And sometimes uh, some social networks do not accept PNG, which is a very good format, um, and they want JPEG instead. So what you can do is just going for File, Export, and then you can just export it as a JPEG. You just type JPEG here, that works well, and you export it. Once again, quality 1995 is great. It's going to make a fairly good sized image, but the quality will be great. There we go. I save both of them on my desktop. And if I go on my desktop here, you get a tutorial. So you get the GIMP file, 
which is 17 megabyte because it includes all the details of every single initial image. And then you do have the tutorial PNG, which is 8 megabytes, and the tutorial JPEG, which is 6, and so which is 2 megabytes. And the difference is barely noticeable uh, on a screen. It's really, you, you won't see the difference on social media. If you print them, you will see the difference, but there we go. So this is how uh, you can uh, easily create, see there's hardly any difference, you can uh, uh, create these beautiful images using uh, GIMP as a free software. Now somebody else has been asking me uh, how I, they could use GIMP for image processing, for processing image from RAW or uh, from JPEG um, to clean up the background. And this is something I've never really done because I think that the tool is not the easiest. Uh, but there should be a way to uh, find the highlights, uh, finding the areas which are overexposed, to fil filter them out. But I will need to research a bit more on that because I'm not familiar. So this is my plan for the next whenever um, to create a video about uh, how to edit images in game. But don't hold your breath because I need to learn it by myself. I hope this has been useful for you and that you will be able to use this information to produce very nice uh, tutorials using your photos. Thanks for listening and I hope that you learn a few things. Have a nice day!